Hello everyone and welcome back. As some of you may know from watching some of my previous videos, I am currently in the process of rounding out my exotic weapon collection. One of those weapons that has eluded me until now, whether it's been because of timing or luck, has been the Black Spindle. You can get the Black Spindle by completing an alternate ending to the Lost to Light story mission. You can do this when and only when this particular mission is featured as the Daily Heroic. To get to the alternate ending, play the mission as normal until you get to the room where you need to open the door with three runes. Instead of opening the door, head down the path you normally take for the Shadow Thief Strike, leading you down to Tanix's Catch. From there, teleport up as normal, but then once you enter the first room, you have 10 minutes to get through the rest of the catch and kill the final boss. Here's how my fire team and I managed to get this done. For your primary weapon, I recommend anything with Will of Light. You're going to be finding a lot of Taken, so any additional damage is going to help you quite a bit. The Doom of Chelchis or Smite of Moraine are particularly useful here. For your special, I recommend a high impact sniper rifle, anything with silver or void. Your priority is going to be to take out the Blights as soon as you enter the room, so snipers are perfect for this. Your MO for this entire encounter should be to take out the Blights first and then clear out the adds. For my Heavy, I actually opted for the Raze Lighter just because of how quickly you can do a lot of damage. It's absolutely perfect for taking out Captains and Knights since they have Solar Shields. As soon as we enter the second room, again, priority number one is going to be to take out those Blights, just so you can minimize the amount of adds that spawn. As soon as you take down the Blights, your next priority should be the three Taken Wizards. You're going to want to take these three out as fast as possible, just so they stop spawning those darn Shadow Flaw. After you've got those down, you're going to want to focus on the Snipers at the top. They actually caused us the most trouble and slowed our progress a little bit. It wasn't the cleanest encounter, but we managed to get through with over 5 minutes to spare. As soon as you enter the final room, your priority should be to take out the Blights. There are 4 of them, one in each corner of the room. The strategy that worked for us were to take out the Blights, clear the adds, and DPS the boss. I took it upon myself to make sure all the Blights are cleared and that I kept damaging the boss. Also, just because I was such a well-equipped Solar Titan, I decided to also help out with the Knights and Captains. You want to make sure to clear out adds as much as you can during the fight. You don't want to let them stack up, because they will become a lot more overwhelming later on. That and mostly because those Scions will continue to split forever. Any of the times I might have failed in the past was because we weren't able to manage all of the adds. Once Drivix is down, it should be smooth sailing and everyone should focus on clearing everything out. We finished it with a minute and a half to spare, which means it only took us three and a half minutes to clear the entire room. So now let's take a look at this infamous weapon. The Black Spindle is of course an exotic solar sniper rifle, taking the model of the Black Hammer from year one. Black Hammer was of course everyone's favorite weapon from Crota's End, simply because of what White Nail used to be, which was rapidly landing 3 precision shots will refill your magazine. This perk used to magically generate ammo out of thin air and didn't take it from your reserves. Bungie has since changed that and now it does take ammo from your reserves. Its final perk is Mulligan, missing a shot has a chance to return ammo directly to the magazine. So let's compare it to my favorite sniper rifle in the game right now, the Thousand Yard Stare. As you can see, the stats are pretty similar, but that little difference in rate of fire actually makes a huge difference. And instead of White Nail, the Thousand Yard Stare has Triple Tap, which means with a steady hand, the Thousand Yard Stare has a 5 bullet magazine, and that 5th bullet is not from your reserves. The Black Spindle is a very good sniper rifle and has very high impact. If you are an excellent sniper, you will have no problem triggering White Nail. Where Black Spindle really shines is against slow ultras with big hitboxes. Just like Black Hammer did in year 1. As you can see here, Bax never stood a chance. The only real issue is with the Black Spindle's rate of fire. I can get 5 shots off with a 1000 yard stare in the same time it takes me to fire 3 with this gun. Now of course the advantage is that I don't have to reload this weapon, but I don't really find that that's too much of an issue. Unless you're fighting an Ultra that's literally standing there, like the Warpriest, you will always have an opportunity to reload your gun, 
whether it's finding some cover or getting out of the enemy's way. Now, of course, the big question is, is this worthy of my exotic slot? And the answer to that is, sure, yeah, it's a very useful weapon. And at least for me, I made it a very strong point to find legendaries that I absolutely love, so I'll always be able to choose this for my special. But even then, it has very limited and very specific uses. The Black Spindle is a formidable weapon and probably the best special exotic in the game right now. And that is, of course, until we get the exotic Pravis Revenge. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Bungie. What do you think of the Black Spindle? Is it worthy of your exotic slot? Let me know in the comments below. Drop a like if you can, and subscribe for more Destiny content and I will see you all next time.